The following are scenes from Snap that didn't make the final production, but that you may find interesting. In this first scene, Blackwood is writing his statement to inform the guests of what's going on at the resort after the second attack. Subject. Urgent information. Oasis Spa and Golf Resort. Dear guests, we regret to inform you that in separate incidents over the past 24 hours, two guests have gone missing and are suspected to have lost their lives to a dangerous predatory animal that is believed to be on the loose at the resort. Our deepest condolences go out to the families of those affected. To ensure the safety of all guests, we are canceling or postponing all events indefinitely. For the safety of our staff, we are limiting personnel to indoor essential workers only. We are asking all guests, if they cannot evacuate, please stay in their rooms until such time that it is safe. We understand that this may cause inconvenience, and as a gesture of goodwill, we will be refunding all fees and room charges for the duration of your stay. We will be providing transportation for those who need it, and the resort will cover all costs for transportation changes. Someone will be calling your rooms directly, and if we can't reach you, we will call the mobile numbers we have on file in order to communicate this message directly to you. Once again, our deepest condolences to the families, and if we can be of any assistance, please do not hesitate to ask. We ask that at this time you return to your rooms and stay there for your safety. Thank you for your understanding and cooperation. Sincerely, Orion Blackwood, Oasis Spa and Golf Resort. In this next scene, Security Chief Thompson is ambushed by the press as he sets up for the stakeout. Mr. Thompson, Mr. Thompson, can you tell us what's going on? Well, hmm, let's see. What's happening at the resort? Well, the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, and we have a fully staffed spa offering relaxing massages, a state-of-the-art gym with the latest exercise equipment, and a top-notch dining experience with gourmet cuisine. Oh, and let's not forget about the beautiful beach with crystal clear waters and the breathtaking sunsets. It's great until a 15-foot-long, thousand-pound fucking alligator with razor-sharp teeth rips your face off and drags you into the intercoastal. Everything's just fucking peachy around here. Thanks for asking. Orion Blackwood meets the media for his 9 a.m. press conference. Good morning. My statement will be brief. First, I would like to issue an apology on behalf of my security chief, Mr. Thompson for some of the language that was used with the reporters a few moments ago. I ask you to cut him some slack. It's been a tough morning. At around 5.15 this morning, Mr. Thompson arrived at the green on hole number 11 to check in on the overnight efforts to trap the alligator. Upon his arrival, he discovered the body of Mackie Sullivan, who had unfortunately snared himself, had lost his life to the alligator at some point overnight. I immediately called Chief Cassidy who met us at the scene along with Deputy James Vargas. Shortly after his arrival, while investigating the shoreline, Vargas was attacked suddenly by the alligator, who had presumably returned to feast on his previous victim. Deputy Vargas has unfortunately not been recovered and is presumed dead. We're going to evacuate the property, press included, and we're going to engage in an operation to hunt down and destroy this animal. I ask now that all guests and press evacuate the property immediately. We will be maintaining limited staff to support the stakeout, which will begin right now. Blackwood puffed on his cigar, leaned on the side of the RV, which lit up the otherwise pitch-black golf course, and pulled out his phone. Curious to see how he is being viewed by the outside world, he logs into Twitter and does a quick search for his name. The first thing he sees is his face, photoshopped into a still from the movie Jaws, transposed with Mayor Vaughn's face. The caption read, The resort is open and people are having a wonderful time. Blackwood turned off his phone and put it back into his pocket. Alternate Ending Exhausted from Blackwood's service, in which he gave a rousing eulogy for the man he'd known less than a week, Chief Cassidy kicks back in his recliner, with his feet up and a glass of whiskey in his hand. His dog Chester sleeps soundly on the sofa beside him while his wife Mary is out like a light in the matching recliner next to him. Suddenly the phone rings in the other room. Cassidy puts down his whiskey and walks towards the sound of the ringer. Hello? says Cassidy. Chief, this is Deputy Johnson. You're not going to want to hear this. 
I mean, you're not going to believe it, but there's been another one. I'm Derek. I am the writer, producer, and creator of Snap. That's how you say it. Snap. I created this as kind of a Jaws-inspired project. I listened to Kevin Smith. He's one of my favorite podcasters and filmmakers. And he said, you got to create the things that you want to exist. And I always thought that, you know, a audio drama in the style of Jaws, maybe about a different animal, would be a really fun project. I could never do the voices. I could never do all of the narration that I felt was necessary for this. So I used synthesized audio, which in itself was a fun project because I was kind of learning along the way uh, how to use this uh, this tool, which I think is going to be useful in the future. Hopefully there'll be more stories, more thrillers, more dramas, more biographies, all sorts of things coming uh, in different styles. But, you know, I, I thought this would be a useful project to kind of learn some of the new technology that's available to work on my uh, audio mixing and to tell a story that I've been wanting to tell uh, for a long time. Snap is not something that you should take too seriously. Very few people actually get attacked by alligators. You know, Peter Benchley, when he wrote Jaws, said that one of his biggest regrets was that people started killing sharks all over the world. And I just want to say and go on record, uh, don't go shooting alligators just because you uh, listen to Snap. Now, if they're coming after you, that's a different story. But uh, I don't think a scenario like this is necessarily realistic. But it was a fun project. It was something that I wanted, you know, not to be taken too seriously. It's uh, It's got some humor. It's got some, you know, easily crafted tropes. Uh, and it's meant to be kind of a quick A to Z adventure for when you got to make that hour-long drive. So uh, I hope that um, the folks who listen to it and enjoy it... Uh, Share it with their friends, share it with their family, listen to it year after year, maybe when you're making that trek up to the lake. The character of Cassidy, I actually wrote him with Chief Brody kind of in mind, but also as Hank Azaria, the character. I had just finished watching uh, Brockmire, <laughs> which is this show about a baseball announcer. And Hank Azaria is one of the great, you know, voice characters and I think one of the funniest actors working today, very underrated. And so I kind of wrote him with Hank Azaria's face in mind. So if you're listening to this, Hank Azaria's face is who you need to put with uh, Cassidy's voice. Chief Blackwood, I didn't really have any one particular person in mind. I kind of thought of him as a non-evil version of Hannibal Lecter <laughs> with some bad luck, a guy who... Uh, had ambition, was brilliant, worked his way up from nothing. But, you know, there was a potential ending that I had originally written, but I decided not to use in the end, uh, which was, you know, when Chief Cassidy comes back uh, after giving his eulogy, um, there's a call and someone had found licenses for like 15 or 16 missing people among uh, Blackwood's thing. So, like, I kind of had him in mind as this evil genius who kept it hidden the whole time, but since I never re revealed that he was a, uh, uh, a serial killer, uh, he gets to go out a hero. Yeah, the golfer. Uh, Kurt. Uh, so I named him after my buddy Kurt, who's an avid golfer, an excellent golfer. Uh, the characters were not similar. You know, Kurt would never slyly feed someone beer in hopes to throw off their short game. He would just go out there and, and, and win. Uh, but I needed a Chrissy Watkins. If you've ever seen Jaws or read the book Jaws, Chrissy Watkins was the character that got eaten uh, in the beginning of the movie, the woman. And uh, I needed someone to establish that, you know, there's a dangerous alligator out there. And I needed him to be alone. And I just thought, you're on this luxury resort. There's probably not, you know, one person golfing by himself. So I put two guys together, but I needed to get them 
I need to get them separated. So the one guy had stomach issues. And no, the George Washington story is not something that's based on real life. However, the sensitivity to eating a very poor diet is something that I'm familiar with. Uh, but uh, anyway, I needed to separate them. And then, you know, Kurt, unfortunately, uh, got his ball a little bit too close to the water. Security Chief Thompson is based on, you know, a kind of ex-cop trope. Uh, I named him after my buddy Rob Thompson, uh, a guy who um, I, I just think is uh, one of the funniest people I've ever met, smartest people I've ever met, and uh, just, you know, creating a project that who knows how long people will be listening to it. Uh, I wanted a, a way to include my friends in it. Uh, so Rob Thompson's name got carried on, but the character is not similar to the actual Rob. Uh, this guy is, um, you know, he's an ex-cop. Uh, he uh, arrested uh, Orion's uh, sister, Ophelia, and then um, fell in love with her. And they move back to uh, the resort, and he agrees to be chief of security, probably a much less dangerous job. Uh, that is until the alligator shows up. Probably my one regret about this project is not including his scene. Uh, you can listen to it on the deleted scenes uh, where he interacts with the press. That was my favorite thing, but it, it was just unnecessary to the story. I was trying to get it to be about an hour long. Uh, and, uh, you know, they say in writing, kill your darlings. Probably the toughest thing that I had to do during this project was figure out how to kill the alligator. Typically, they just snare them or shoot them uh, in a, um, you know, a simple manner. Uh, but I wanted this alligator to explode like the shark in End of Jaws. Uh, and I was watching Yellowstone. That's where I got the idea for the bucket full of explosives. They use it to blow up a tree stump. And I thought if you can put a snare and then have a couple of buckets of explosives on either side, you kind of create this kill zone for a, uh, a gator. Unfortunately, the snare doesn't work, and they have to kind of uh, trap him because the rifle uh, uh, jams, so they need to secure this beast so they can shoot it with 357. Uh, things get kind of out of hand, and they end up having to blow it up with the, uh, the sacrifice made by Orion Blackwood. I hope everyone enjoyed this. Uh, it was my pleasure to create and, and write, and I don't know what I'm going to do now that it's done. i got to come up with something else. Thanks for listening.